Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 2 1 of May June 2020 for Math paper 2. Uh, now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions. As we know already, we have a list of formulas we can use for this paper, but as well, we can use also use our calculator to kind of calculate uh, the questions along the way. Now, right, let's move on to question number one. Uh, so, here we have to solve the equation 5 power of w minus 1 equal to 12. Now, giving your answers correct to two decimal places, so you kind of know, you kind of know already your answer will not be exact because the question tells you to give your answer correct to two decimal places, right? Uh, now, usually what uh, we have is something like this. Let's first ignore that. Um, let me uh, give you, you the thought process of usually what do we think about. For example, let's say we had 5 power w minus 1 equal to 25. In this case, it will be kind of different from this one. Why? Because usually we would say, okay, here we have 5, here we have 25, but we also know five, 25 is 5 power 2. So we will try to convert them into the same base as this one. So this is usually what we will do. But in this case, as you can see, it's not possible. We have 12 over here. So obviously, it's nothing in terms of power 5. So we will have to go with the logarithm option. For example, I can apply ln on both sides, ln of 5 power this and ln of 12, okay? Now by using the laws of logarithms, I can send this one to the beginning. That will become w minus 1 multiplied by ln of 5 equal to ln of 12. So w minus 1 will be ln of 12 divided by ln of 5. Again, you can use log as well. It's up, it's up to your preference. You can use ln or log, okay? Nothing uh, restricts you with that. So finally, w will be ln of 12 over ln of 5 plus 1. Okay, so let's see what is that value. So ln of 12 divided by ln of 5 plus 1. That should be 2.54 correct to two decimal place. And this is your answer for question part A. Now for part B, we have to solve the equation. Let's see how can we solve that equation. So what can we observe here? We can rewrite this as such. This is x power 1 over 3 square. Makes sense, right? This is 5 x power 1 over 3 and plus 6. Now we can try to use a substitution to help us solve this, um, this question. For example, I can say let y equal to x 1 over 3. So this will become y square minus 5y plus 6. So now we simply have a simple quadratic equation we can factorize or solve by using your formula, right? That will be y times y, 6 is 3 times 2. To get minus 5, I have to have minus 2, minus 3. And then I have to check, minus times minus is plus. So here we have plus, we are good to go. So this will be uh, your factorization. y will be 2, and y will be 3. But again, we're not trying to find y, we're trying to find the value of x. So we have x, 1 over 3 is 2, or x, 1 over 3 is 3. Now, if you want to make this become x, we have to apply the power of 3, but you have to apply on both sides, obviously, if you want to do that. So, power of 3, power of 3. Why? Because we want this to become x. That will be x, and that will be 8. x will be 27. So, we have these two options as your answer for question part b. Let's move on to question number 2. So, we have to write this down as a single logarithm to the base of 10. So we have to know a few laws here. So if in case you guys don't know, let's say I have log to the uh, value of a plus log b, that is simply log a b. Let's say we have log a minus log b, that will be log a divided by b. So these are the two options for that. Now the same way over here, uh, we have this and that. So first thing we can do, we can send this one to the top. Make sense? We have this x square. 
So we have to know this law as well, as we have used in part one. This, we could have placed this in the beginning, or we can send this back to the top. It's up to you, right? So in this case, it's easier if you do that, that will be the case. Now, if you have to minus, if we combine those two, they have the same log, so that'll be log. We have x plus six, and here we have plus, so plus we have to multiply, multiply by three. Here you go. And that will be log x squared. Here we have minus, become divide by, the value inside will be 3x plus 18. So this is your answer for part A to express as a single log. Now for part B, we have to solve the equation, hence solve the equation. Hence, it means we have to use part 1 to solve part B. Now we have just seen this whole thing transformed into this. So let the rest is, let's write this down. So what is this one? This is simply log to the base of 10, right? Same thing. It represents that. This is x squared over the value of 3. x plus 18 has to be 0. Now to solve this, obviously, we have to know something. For example, let's say I had log to the base of 10, x equal to 0. To find the value of x, I have to send the base right here. It will become x equal to 10 power 0. So similarly, using the same logic, to find that value inside, this value inside, we have to send the base on the other side. That will become 10 power 0. Now anything power 0 is 1, so that will be 1. So we can just cross multiply, you will have x squared is equal to 3x plus 18. So x squared will be minus 3x minus 18 has to be 0. Now we can solve this using factorization, obviously, because it is a quadratic function. Again, it depends. You can use your formula or you can use factorization if you prefer. Now, what is 18? We have to choose two uh, the factors. So 18 is 1 times 18. It could be 2 times 9 or it could be 3 times 6. Now we have to have minus 3. So let's choose something relevant. We can choose this one. We can choose this will be x times x, obviously, and this will be 6 times 3. Now to get minus 3, I have to have minus 6 plus 3. So x will be the value of 6, or x will be the value of minus 3. So finally, x can only be p6. Why? Because obviously log can only take positive value. So because of that, it cannot take negative value. So this will not be valid. Only value will be 6 for question number 2. Now let's move on to question number 3. So variables x and y are such that when, uh, when we have a root, cubic root of y is against x squared, a straight line passing through the points, we have the passing points already, is obtained. We have to find y as a function of x. So to find the equation of a straight line, we have to find its gradient. How do you find the gradient? We have to use the passing point. Usually what we do, we take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is minus 7 over the value of 8. But let's check, right? Uh, 7 actually. My bad. 7. That will be 7. So the gradient will be minus 1. Now we do understand that the equation of a straight line usually is y equal to mx plus c. This is when y is against x usually. But now in this case we have cubic root of y m against x squared plus c. So the equation of the line will be cubic root of y equal to m is minus, then it will be x squared plus c. Now we have to find the value of c by using one of those points. So let's use, um, which one do you want? Let's use this one. That will be 16, 1. This is my value of you can choose either one, it doesn't uh, really matter. And again, in this case, because we're using the, the variables this against this, we understand this will be x squared, and this will be root of y instead of the usual x and y. Right, so replace back, you will have, this is equal to 1, this will be minus 16 plus c. So c will be 17. So finally, we uh, conclude that what we have, cubic root of y is equal to minus x squared plus 17. Now we have to express y as a function of x, 
So to make this become, so we have to understand something is cubic root of something is actually the something power 1 over 3. Now to make this become y, I have to apply power 3. That will be apply power 3 on both sides. So you have y is equal to minus x squared plus 17 power 3. And this is your answer for expressing y as a function, so y as a function of x. Great. Now let's move on to part 4 of your question. The polynomial uh, p of x is equal to this, so we have an ex equation, p of x equal to this. Now, as you can see, this one is a cubic curve, right? So we have x power 3. Uh, it has a factor of this. Now, it means that if we uh, divide by this, the remainder will be 0. But for what value? The value, to find the value, we just equate that equation, that linear factor to 0. So when the value of x is 3, we have no remainder, so remainder will be 0, which means if p of x taking the value of 3, it will be 0. So use that equation to form an equation. Replace the value of x by 3, you will have m. 3 power 3 will be 27, minus 17 times 9, plus 3, n plus 6, have to be 0, according to your question. Now we have to simplify, that will be 27, m. Um, so I think we can do something here, is we can divide by 3 everywhere, right? You will have 3 here, go away, 3 will go away, and this will become 2, and this will become 9. Okay, so you will have what? You will have 9m minus, so 17 times 3, that will be 51, plus n plus 2 equal to 0. You will have 9m plus n minus 49 is equal to 0. So n will be the value of 49 minus 9m. This is my equation number 1. Again, if that's confusing you right here, we can always proceed the same way, which is I can add them one by one. So we have 27m minus, so 17 times 9. That will be 153 plus 3n plus 6. So these two will be together. So 153 plus 6, that will be 147. So 27m plus 3n is equal to 147. Divide by 3 everywhere, you will have 9m plus n is equal to 143 divided by 3. That should be 49. So you have the same thing in the end. Okay. So this is my equation number 1. Now, moving on it has a remainder of minus 12 when divided by this. Now what is the value of x here? We take this factor, not factor actually, this linear equation, we equate that to 0, which means the value of x have to be minus 1. So which means when your function p of x, taking the value of minus 1, we will have minus 12 as the remainder. Right, now let's move on. So let's try to find the other equation, replace, and see what happens. So p of minus 1 will be minus uh, 1 cubed times m, right? Minus 17 minus 1 squared plus n times minus 1 plus 6 have to give you the value of minus 12. This will give you minus m, uh, minus 17 minus n plus 6 have to be minus 12. So that will give you minus m, minus n, and that will be the value of, let's send everything to this side. Let's see what happens. I have minus 12, minus 6, plus 17. So when you send the numbers on this side, the sign will change, become a minus 1. So let's flip side, you will have m plus n has to be 1, right? Same thing as this. Now this is my equation number 2. Now we have the three equations, uh, let's see. What is the uh, what are the values of m and n in this case? So let's do that. So n is equal to this. We place back in the equation. So n, m plus n, n is also equal to 49 minus this is equal to 1. So you will have this minus this will be, sorry, m minus this will become minus 8m is equal to 1 minus 49. Minus 8m is equal to minus 48. So divide, you will have the value of 6, 
minus 48 divided by minus 8 should be 6. m will be 6, so n will be 49 minus 9 times 6. 49 minus 9 times 6, that should be minus 5. According to the equations, again, uh, we have to double check um, all the time. When I do this kind of questions, if I was in an exam situation, I would double check just to make sure that I don't have anything uh, suspicious going on so I don't make any mistakes. Now, <laughs> let's move on to my main question. So from here, I know P of X has to be M, which is the value of 6 X cubed minus uh, 17 X squared minus 5 X plus the value of 6, right? So right now we have the value of P of X. Now from here, I need to find the remainder when P of X is divided by this, which means when this is my divisor, what is the value of X? We equate that to zero. So when X is equal to two, I want to find what is the remainder of my polynomial. So replace the value of X by two. Six, two cubed minus 17 times two square minus five times two plus six. That will be six times eight minus 17 times four minus 10 plus six. Solve, six times eight minus 17 times four minus 10 plus six. That will be minus 24 as your answer for the remainder of this polynomial. And that is your question number four. Okay, so let's move on to question number five. So what do we have in this question? So here we have to do what? Write in ascending powers of x, the first three terms in this expansion. So let's try. So we have power of n. n combination, we have 0 here. That will be 1 for x. This will match this one. And n minus this will be just n. Now plus n combination 2. Right? And that will be 1. And that will be 4x. That'll be one actually, that'll be one over here. That'll be n minus one. And then here we have n combination two. And we have this, that'll be two here, and that should be n minus two. So here we have one. So anything combination zero will be one, this will become one, and that'll be one. Plus, this is n combination one, and this will become one, that will be four x. Here we have n combination two, that will be just uh, 1, and that will become 16x squared. Now obviously we can use the list of formula here to simplify this further. As you can see, we have the answer right here. How do you simplify this? So, if it's n choose 1, that will be n combination 1 is equal to n factorial over the value of, again, I'm just using the formula right here to Simplify this. If you have enough practice, you would know it by heart already. But if you don't, no big deal. Just use this right here, right? That will be n factorial over n minus 1 factorial times r, which is 1 factorial. Now, what is 1 factorial? Yeah, you have to, I mean, you can just check. It is just 1. So this basically doesn't really matter. But the rest, we can simplify. For example, how do you simplify this? We understand that n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial, right? So this will cancel out if you realize that will become n times n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial times 1. So this and this will cancel out, you will have n. So that will be 1 plus n times 4x. Now what is this one? So let's try to find out. Same again. Um, we've done this just to show you guys how would you proceed if you guys don't remember anything at all. You will use the formula right there and then try to simplify this. So this one again, same steps. You will have n combination 2 is equal to n factorial over the value of n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial, right? According to your formula. Now I'll simplify. This will become what? As you can see, this is can also express press this as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. So on top you will have remaining n minus 1 minus 2 factorial over the value of 
and minus 2 factorial. Now what is 2 factorial? 2 factorial is simply the value of, of 2. Right? So this and this will cancel out. So you will have n times n minus 1 over the value of 2. So become n times n minus 1 over the value of 2 times 16x squared. Simplify. Uh, this and this will go away. This becomes 8 over here. Uh, you will have 1 plus 4nx. And here you will have plus 8n times n minus 1x squared. Again, this is your first three terms of this expansion. You'll have something like that. Now let's move on to the other questions. So in the expansion of this, times this, again, this is simply this right here. The coefficient of x squared is this. Find the value of n. So let's try to find out. Let's try to find the term in x squared. If I were to expand this, I will take what? This is the value right here, which is 1 plus 4nx plus 8n n minus 1 x squared, right? And this is 1, blah, blah, blah. Here you go. Now again, I only care about the term in x squared. So for the first term, I'll take 1 times which one? Times this one, right? To get something in x squared, that will be 8n, n minus 1, x squared. Now here we have minus 4x. Multiply which one of them to get something in x squared? Multiply this one, 4n, x. Again, this is just to find the term in x squared. The rest doesn't really matter for now. So you will have 8n, n minus 1, x squared, minus 16 uh, n x squared. So we can simplify obviously that will become 8 n squared minus 8 n, right? That will be square right here, minus 16 n x squared. Simplify, we can factorize the x squared outside. You will have 8 n squared minus 8 n minus 16 n, and that will become this term right here. Now, we understand that this is supposed to be this one. So we know we're supposed to get 6032x squared. So by comparing coefficients, this and this are supposed to be the same thing. So we have 8n squared minus, so what is minus 8 minus 16? Let's double check. I'll be minus 24. n is supposed to get you this one. So simplify and everything to one side. You will have this, minus 24n, minus 60, 32 has to be 0. Now we can simplify, divide everyone by 8. Let's try. That will become n squared, minus 3n, minus 60, 32 divided by 8. That will be 754, equal to 0. So I do not know the factors of this number. I can use factorization, obviously. But I can try to use just a formula directly, just to see what can I get, right? So n will be minus b, which is 3, plus minus root of b squared, minus 4 times a times c. And then everything divided by 2a, which is just 2. So 9 minus 4 times 1 times minus 754. That will be this one, and root of this will be 55. So 3 plus minus 55 over 2. So from here I can find the value of n. n has to be positive, so we will just negate, we will just not take into account the negative value, so there will be 3 plus 55 over 2, which is 58 over 2, and that will be what? 29. So 29 will be your value of n for this one. Again, in this example, we only care about the term in x squared. Once we have that, we compare the coefficients, and then we try to solve to find the value of n. And let's move on to question part b. Now, find the term independent of x. So independent of x means term having no x. Now, one way of solving this is obviously you can expand the whole thing, and then you check which one has no x. Or we can be uh, a bit wiser to see what can we do. Usually, how would you expand this? You will take the power of... 10, we have power here, combination something, let's call this uh, n, and we have the first term, which is x over 2, and then minus 8 over x power 4. 
Now, obviously this will be n here and this will be 10 minus n. Now, I have to choose n in such a way when I apply them to my uh, values over here, the x will go away. So what n can I choose? We can test. Again, n can be the value between 0, 1, until 10. So between those values, because we have power of 10, we can choose n between those values. Now for which value of n, this will the x will disappear. So we can try by trial. Let's think. If you choose n to be the value of, let's say for example, 2, right? Let's see what happens. 10, choose 2. Now will be x over 2, minus 8 over x power 4. We have 2 here, and this will become 8. So what is 10, choose 2? That will be 45. Now will be x power 8 over 2 power 8. Now will be 2, 5, 6. Now 8 power 2, that will be 64 over x power 8. You agree? Now in that case, clearly you can see this will go away. So you have 45 times 64 over 2, 5, 6. That will be 11, 1 quarter for your answer for the term which is independent of x. Again, this is the, done by trial, so basically you try in your head or you can try on paper to see which one works out. The value of n is between 0 and 10 because the power is 10. That's the maximum you can go to. That is your question uh, number 5. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.